specifically Stockholm often has been called the Silicon Valley or the tech hub of Europe and today I want to talk about why is that the case, what kind of government support and what kind of company support allows for the situation like this, why are there so many technological, especially startups in Stockholm and is it worth to move here to work in a tech company? All those questions I'll try to answer in this video. We're going to talk about the government support, um, the laws and rules that allow for people to create startups or create their own companies. We're going to talk about the general technological adoption and environment in Sweden. And we will talk about the work environment in the technological companies. How does it compare to other places? And is it worth to start working there? Some of the Swedish tech companies you might have heard of or maybe use their product. For example, there is Spotify, the audio streaming platform. There is Klarna, it's a fintech company and now a bank which allows for online retailers to implement their payment solutions so the users can buy products with one click of the button without having to enter their credit card details. Then there are companies more in the game sector like King which is actually the company that I moved for to work here in Stockholm. They created Candy Crush and have been acquired by uh, Activision four or five years ago. Then there's also Mojang which created Minecraft and they've been bought by Microsoft. There are companies like DICE who have the series of Battlefield games and they've been bought by Electronic Arts. Then there is Skype bought by Microsoft. There is iZettel, the online and offline solution for the small retailers to allow to have like transactions in their storefronts. They've been bought by PayPal. There is Pilperion, which is an AI startup that's pretty popular in US too. Their consulting services have been used by Tesla and NASA. And there are plenty, plenty of other technological companies in fintech sector, in games, in healthcare that are smaller and maybe not as well known, but probably they still have a lot of potential to become the next billion dollar unicorn startup of Stockholm. Maybe you're surprised by the fact that some of those companies actually originated in Sweden. And I think it aligns very well with the Swedish way of living and the idea that we shouldn't show off too much, we shouldn't uh, praise ourselves too much, we should be humble and our achievements will speak for us. So uh, yes, of course, Swedish Silicon Valley is not as well pumped and trendy as the original Silicon Valley in the California, but it's still a really nice place for startups to start their journey. And uh, now I'm going to go into why I think this happens. Starting with government support, um, everything begins with the education and education in Sweden is free, especially the higher education, which is a bit more relevant for the use case of creating a startup. It's free for the Swedish citizens and for people from EU. Um, there are plenty of really good schools, like Stockholm School of Economics is very highly ranked for business degrees. Then KT and Chalmers University of Technology, which is actually in Gothenburg, are really good schools that provide a lot of really great engineers, machine learning specialists, data scientists, developers, and so on. A lot of those people that finish degrees in the KTH, I know a few colleagues that did their internships in the companies where I work that just like started their own businesses in fintech or health sector, which I think is pretty cool. And there are a lot of incubators within KTH as well to like start on working our ideas, create business plans, do MVPs. So everything is kind of built around in a way to support your creativity and give you as much freedom and as much support in um, trying to build your business or trying to prove your idea. If you are not a university student anymore, if you have a full-time job, there is still support for you to just try out your idea in terms of building a startup. For example, there is a law that's called the Right to Leave to Conduct the Business Operations Act, which is a law that allows you, after you pass your probation in the company, if you work for six months, you can take in unpaid leave from that company to just start your own something, to start your own company, to try your business ideas. There are some caveats to that. Of course, it's unpaid and it's maximum six months and you can't do business that's um, competitive to the company that you're working for. But still, I think it's a pretty cool um, like fallback mechanism, which makes me feel kind of safe. Like if I want to start my own business, I know that 
If I fail, I can still come back to the same role that I had before with new learnings, with a new experience, tried out something new and cool that I was interested in. And it doesn't feel as like permanent as just quitting and starting something new. And then the third part that government supports is that Sweden is generally quite easy to hire tech specialists uh, from abroad and a lot of companies benefit from that. The same the ones that I mentioned before, King, Klarna, Spotify, hire a lot of employees from other countries and move them to Sweden. It's somewhat comparatively easy to ask for work, work permit for those kind of professionals than other EU countries or Schengen West Europe countries, countries like Germany or France, you have to have a diploma of a higher education to be able to apply for a work permit. It's not the case in Sweden, which is really good for a lot of developers who just like learned on their own or learned for experience, but not necessarily Gotten, have gotten a degree in computer science. And generally, if you have all your documents in check, if you have a company that's hiring you and uh, helping you through the work permit request process, um, if you don't have any issues with the law, then it's most likely that you're gonna get your work permit. There is no quotas here. There are no um, lotteries for business visas like there are in US or in Switzerland, for example. So it's much easier here to actually move and start working provided you are in the tech sector. The second part that I think is really important to mention a little bit is the level of technological adoption in Sweden and in Stockholm specifically, which is where I live. Like, I don't know exactly about the rural Sweden, but in Stockholm, I think the level of technological adoption is very high. There are so many things you can do online. You can apply for your work permit online. You can do your taxes online. You can create a doctor appointment and actually have a doctor appointment online through video call with uh, like eligible doctors within, I don't know, a few hours when you need to do that. There is a flip side to that coin too, because for example, in Sweden, if you don't have personal number and bank ID, which is all the things that you need to go through all those services online, you're just screwed. I honestly don't know how would you survive without a personal number and bank ID because it's just so convenient when you can transfer money online with your, with your phone or yeah, have a doctor's appointment online. I think another important part is that Sweden moved to be almost pretty much exclusively cashless society quite fast. I don't really know a lot of places that are cash only and a lot of places are actually cashless so you can't pay with cash. So if you're coming here as a tourist, don't really bother converting like your physical money or cash into Swedish kroner because it will be really hard to find a place where you can spend that. In my four and a half years here, I almost never use cash and honestly, I don't really know how it looks like. But yeah, technological adoption here is quite good. Everyone has smartphones. Everyone has to have smartphones and bank ID because otherwise it's really hard to do anything here. And I think this like forward thinking mentality actually is why for Swedes it's easy to adopt new products, adopt new fintech solutions or new healthcare solutions where you can literally just have a chat with your doctor through video call um, as compared to other countries where there will be more uh, confrontation from like general public to adopt those kind of things. So yeah, technological advancement probably plays a big role in why Sweden is the Silicon Valley of Europe. And the next part about working in Sweden is of course the work environment, which is honestly the reason why I like to work in Sweden. I think the work environment here aligns a lot with my values and with my comfort. I uh, really enjoy it and I don't have a lot of experience working in other countries. I've worked in Russia and in France for a bit and it's quite a different work environment, even though in both cases I worked in tech. On the website sweden.se, which I really recommend to everyone who's interested in Sweden to just browse through, there's a lot of really cool articles, there's a lot of interesting information that I still find there is something that I didn't know about Sweden before. There is an article about five reasons to work in Sweden, and um, I'm gonna try to go through that and provide my perspective on all those reasons, the way I experienced it. So take it with a grain of salt. Again, it's only really related to the Stockholm tech bubble of the international tech companies that I work for. Workers have strong rights. Uh, workers' rights are one of the cornerstones of the modern Swedish labor market. Labor unions are powerful and collective bargaining has meant that the development of an environment where the health and safety of employees come first. 
That is true, there are plenty of unions that you can join as an employee of a company. Companies generally don't object for you to do that. I've never really felt a strong need to do that in terms of a company protecting my worker rights. So the companies that I've worked for generally are quite good in terms of their values. They support me as an employee, my growth, my health care and so on. So for those reasons, I'm not sure if that's important to join a union. However, I know um, that if you're a part of the union, you might get a better mortgage um, rate or you might, uh, when you're unemployed, you can get a much better unemployment compensation uh, that is more reflective of your previous salary as compared to the overall employment compensation, which probably is something around 13,000 sec, I'm not exactly sure. I haven't heard of a situation so far where someone had to involve the union in their work experience, but again, this is the tech bubble of Stockholm, so it might be different in different companies. Equality is key. Sweden has a lot of anti-discrimination legislations. You can't discriminate employees based on their race, gender, um, identity, religion, sexual orientation or disabilities and that is definitely true. It's different compared to other countries that I've been working in and uh, when it comes to the law protection um, I'm sure it's enforced in a quite good way. However, there is still kind of a flip side of that which is the general feeling and perception of different people in different companies like the diversity and inclusion when you are working for a company and in that case I heard different stories from different people personally as a woman um, especially working in tech sector and in the tech role um, where most of my colleagues are male I don't often feel discriminated in any way. I feel like my opinion counts, it matters, it's respected. Uh, definitely there is no harassment happening in the workplace in my experience. That's not to say though it's perfect. Uh, there are improvement opportunities. It happens that I get someone explaining something to me or I might have a feeling that I've been somewhat overlooked in a meeting. That doesn't happen very often and I feel like the most important part that I can speak up when this happens, I don't feel like I'm going to be retaliated against when I talk about those issues with a manager, with HR or whoever, with a person maybe, whoever needs to hear my feedback. Probably it's still on average better than many other places where one could work, but it is a work in progress and nobody's perfect, so there is definitely a room for improvement here. I would say that I feel safe um, and appreciated and that's really what matters for me at work. Point number three is that you can get not only a work permit for yourself but also for your spouse or your family and that's also different from many other countries where in some cases if you come there to work you have to provide for your whole family and your family members can't work. It's definitely not the case in Sweden. There's a lot of examples of couples and families moving here where one of the person moves for the job and the second person, um, the spouse or the family member can find a job or can study for free even in Sweden, can learn Swedish or have a new uh, occupation that they learn in university to be able to find a better job in Sweden. Innovation is highly valued and yes, this is pretty much what the whole video is about. Innovation is definitely highly valued. There are companies like Spotify or IKEA who that changed and driven the whole fields and the whole industries that they have been working in. Overall, I think, yeah, innovation is, is very important. Innovation on a global scale in terms of like creating a completely new company, but also innovation within the companies that you work in. There is a lot of focus on kind of unleashing the creativity in employees by creating like game jams or hackathons where you can work on any idea that you're interested in, collaborating with different people from the organization. Um, I think overall the work environment creates a somewhat safe space where people feel like they can contribute with the new things, new ideas and pretty much innovate in their job. And that comes down to actual work culture. Sweden is known for having a good work-life balance. There are social systems for parents and long parental leaves for them to benefit for taking care of their kids. Um, you are generally not expected to work on weekends, not expected to work overtime unless it's stated in your contract and it's usually paid for separately. You are not expected to start working at 7 a.m. and finish by, I don't know, midnight 
and there is no this kind of startup related hustle or grind culture as it might be in other countries. People respect everyone's time, people respect everyone's choice to either grind or not grind and in my experience it's actually harder to be this kind of hustle person that really wants to work a lot because coming down to the Swedish values you have to be mindful of how other people will react to that and you have to be extra humble about your motivation and drive for work because usually in a company if uh, if someone if there is a manager that's like frequently sending emails at night or late in the evening to their employees they're going to be someone who will talk to them and tell them that this is not right and this is putting pressure on other people so maybe if you're interested in doing that you should not necessarily show it off uh, which is like good and could be bad in terms of like lack of motivation and drive in people so it is up to you but overall i think i prefer that kind of way of working because i have a choice like i have a choice whether i just want to do the nine to five or nine to six uh, or whether i want to work on the weekends because i'm driven and engaged it's just that I should not expect other people to want to do that as well and I should not show off the fact that I'm doing that because well why I mean I'm doing that if I'm doing that I'm doing that because I'm interested I'm driven not to like show myself like a super hard-working person because that's actually not a benefit here and I think this kind of allowing culture and respect for everyone's time allows for people to feel more safe at work and therefore drives innovation and creativity builds good teams which is a very important part in Sweden as well it's more of a team-oriented culture than individual contributor culture if you're showing up as one person that like drives the whole team and makes all decisions that's definitely not a benefit it's more beneficial to learn how to work with other people and contribute to each other's experience and the point number five is that the welfare system is inclusive you don't have to worry about the cost of healthcare, childcare, or children's education state subsidies make these and other aspects of life affordable that is true, there is a generous parental leave, um, there is a somewhat almost free healthcare system, there are somewhat almost, almost free or very cheap uh, kindergartens, um, schools and high schools are free. However, of course, it comes with a flip side. Overall, Sweden is probably not a country to move to if you want to earn a lot of money, especially in the tech sector, especially working as an employee of the company. The salaries here are on average quite high for the developers and tech professionals. However, they are definitely not comparable to the ones you can get in Silicon Valley or even in countries like Switzerland or England. The cost of living, of course, here is also smaller than in London or in San Francisco, but the salaries are also much more proportionately smaller. So. Sweden is not the place to move to earn a lot of money, but Sweden is the place to move to if you want to feel safe and secure within the society, within the government, within the support of the company that you work for. It's really hard to get fired once you're past probation period, which is six months as well. So you have job security, healthcare security, pension security. Um, the overall work environment here is quite safe again speaking from the tech sector perspectives if you are valuing those things more than earning hundreds of thousands of dollars a year in salary potentially sweden is a place for you to move to now i think a super important disclaimer to say again is that this is really only when it comes to the tech sector and the tech roles that are somewhat of a special bubble within the whole of the job market of Sweden. If you are a competent employee, it's fairly easy to find a job as a developer or data scientist here, especially even if you don't live in Sweden, but it's so much harder if you work in any other sector, healthcare, marketing, public relations, HR, engineering or civil engineering. A lot of people that move to Sweden with those kind of occupations have a much harder time finding a job. They have many more restrictions. For example, it's maybe much more important to speak Swedish and be able to be integrated within the society than as compared to the tech jobs where you rarely need to speak any Swedish. There are many more applicants for those roles. It's much harder to secure a job like this. Sweden is pretty good in terms of like the Silicon Valley of Europe tech bubble thingy to move to and work in 
However, when it comes to other industries, it might be much more challenging. Thank you for watching. I hope this was useful. Let me know in the comments if you have any questions about working in a tech company in Sweden, in Stockholm. I'll try to answer them if I can and um, have a nice day.